what? Let me tell you, everybody's a hip hop critic, but all I want to know is really, what do you know? I've been blessed in people with this deep voice, this voice. Who would you want to stand at my music's top choice? Cultures and nations are starting to see that hip hop is crazy. Be advanced poetry, fluently, it's flowing in like water. Meant to be reshaping you just like the new world order was the cause and effect. When I write some good lyrics, it's the sound that you check. But no disrespect, but I question your intellect. Thinking words don't matter because you can't comprehend. But the words move too fast, you need to listen in class. Because the quality of the sea, my son, will always amaze your ass. And every word that I write is seen the universe twice. I travel to planets, making sure that I'm nice. So open up your ears, that's my advice. Because this price is right, but there are no reels on this board. Trim words and whammies will make you crush your luck. So I don't care about a Grammy, about the flow for my mammy. So step back and catch a verbal jammy. Cause these skills is real, and it's time you learn to feel. Burst two. I feel this pain in my heart, but I let the anger go. There's no solution for some other mental pollution. But I, what I really mean is this. These is Bibles I deliver, working so hard that my hand starts to quiver. Shift the livers, quick like Mickey Rivers. This cloud of smoke <coughs> that I give you. Together, I like kinda, but I prefer chocolate. And mentally to me, the lyrics always seem to rock it. Time to fix your eyes, suck it. A docket like pay, this hip hop been headed the wrong way. But plenty are precise of what they say. Some others are relying strictly on their tracks to the save in their backs Or maybe their pockets For the rest of history I'll wax They'll be known as my kids Stuck to an unverbal bed And what we should do is not lift up the lid So what you slid? You ain't safe You getting tagged out Now you getting dragged out the back And true hip-hop is what you lack To tell you the truth all your cats are just black <laughs> What's the deal, Freeman McNeil? Good people, good people. It's Eric Taylor. <coughs> Big E Astrology. Here tonight on Knowledge is Love Astrology Podcast. Episode 197, All the Way to Heaven. <coughs> <coughs> oh my goodness, excuse me. Got something in the throat. <clears throat> I'm still dealing. I'm on the verge of getting better. God is good. Thank you for your well wishes and all that good stuff. But, you know, sometimes we deal with stuff, right? North Node, Chiron, Aries Retrograde, which started around 6.15 p.m., April 1st, April 25th. Um, <clears throat> it's in my sixth house of Scorpio rising. We're going to look at the chart tonight. My better half should be here soon, but we're going to talk about the overall energy, you know, Mercury retrograde and Aries could be kind of nice in the sense that it's dealing with this karmic faded energy this opportunity to heal childhood childhood wounds for the collective. It's happening during the Aries total solar eclipse next Monday. Um, the shadow period takes us back to the 16 degrees. So from 27 to 16 degrees, it's going to dance, baby, back over the North Node and Chiron. So it's a very karmic faded time. And this is an opportunity where we can slow down, play like brand Nubian, be introspective. And hello to everybody in the chat. We'll get to you in a second. For those who have Mercury retrograde in your natal birth chart, when Mercury goes retrograde, it doesn't affect you all the time the way others it affects others or as deeply. But yes, slow down before you send out your emails or texts. Hopefully you guys signed up and just received the new newsletter for Biggie Astrology, designed by my beautiful, brilliant wife. But yeah, just sent that out because Coffee Talk is coming up Saturday, April 13th, 12 p.m. Eastern, 
looking at, haha, March 15th, the COVID-19 pandemic chart. In the second hour, as a collective, we will read a Coffee Talk member's birth chart, and we'll, at the end, I'll reveal who it is, get the interpretation and analysis. Super fun, super great. Don't hesitate to debate and don't be late. Email your boy, bigeastrology at gmail.com, two hours, $20, so you have got your spot and your opportunity to be great. And you can volunteer your chart, okay? I'll select a chart. People can volunteer, and I will randomly pick a chart. But um, it's an interesting time, you know? Mercury retrograde happens about three, four times a year. It's most common. So a lot of people have a retrograde in the chart. It's retrograde in my chart. But, <clears throat> you know, one thing that we've got to consider in this very explosive second part of Aries season, well, not second part, but the next three weeks, right? The Aries birth chart sale goes to April 20th. But the Mercury retrograde will lead us into Taurus season, Okay. And it won't, what, I think it's, I think I put it in there, but it won't like be back out of the shadow period until May 13th. But if you've already been doing things, started projects, this is a time that you may come back and rethink it, right? Think back to what, even what was going on in your life around March 18th or 19th. Those same themes can come back up again. All right, so we're going to get into it a little bit more more deeper and get into the chart. We're going to get to the chat. Let me know where Aries is in your birth chart, what house, new people, share your sun, moon, risings. And um, thank you for your well wishes. I'm still, you know, she's taking good care of me. I'm still trying to get better. Trying. It's been it's been rough. I got better and then got sick again, and then I've been sick. It's, it's two weeks now. Two weeks. That's a lot. Okay. So hello, 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 everyone. It is so good to be here. And um, yeah, he is on the men. This was his last day <coughs> of the Z pack. <coughs> we are not antibiotic people. So no, I did all the natural stuff first, but she is still going to get me the oregano oil. I know I'm going to run out to the sprouts, pick up that oregano oil. She already had it. But hello, Evelyn. Hey, Ev. It's so good to see you. Thank you. Hello, Dan Figueroa, no longer Danny. Have Dan, you grown up? Dan the man. And um, Bella. Hey, Bella. We're back. Nice to see you and Jacqueline. Hey, nice Jacqueline. to see you too. So we've got like all these wonderful people just who are just amazing part of people. our community. And it is so good to see you. And oh, thank yeah. you. And Jacqueline's and got some amazing spiritual children. The her mm. ch kids charts today. Wow. Oh, this is who you did the yeah. thing with. Wonderful. Oh, Amazing. wow. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, some very spiritual powerhouses <laughs> she got on her hands over there. So that's really awesome. So Bella has Aries in the fourth house. Oh, and Evelyn has hers in the tenth house. Sorry. Okay, so opposing each other. Well, Evelyn you know, I'll say this, right? Um, when you're dealing with it in the fourth house, you know it's in your emotional mind. Things can come back up with the relationship from your childhood home with tu madre, right? And so this is where you have a great opportunity to heal those childhood wounds. Things can be karmic, destined, and faded that you have a new beginning in your current adult home, right? Working from home or different things, but also remember the North Node brings that opportunity that's karmic and faded. And when the Mercury is dancing, baby, it's dancing over the North Node and Chiron. And don't forget, Venus is about to join the party in a day or two, right? So it's um, really a wild time. And this is also happening when the moon comes in in a few days, right, for the eclipse next week. So, oh my goodness. Aries, let's be honest. Can we, we can talk real here, you know, too familiar, my people's. Aries is accident prone. It's assertive, aggressive, the childhood genius, zero to seven years old, the pioneer maverick. It's the brave, courageous leader that we all need to kind of tap into, right? I mean, if we were all really, truly being independent, brave and courageous and asserting ourselves, there wouldn't be no like um, insurrection on like January 6th. We would <laughs> put them all in jail, right? <laughs> the Congress, the Senate, everybody, they, they all would be in prison, Hollywood, all of it. But the reality is, is that 
we've got to take a pause, right? Which is good because Aries is too quick, too impulsive, too thinking without, I mean, too reacting without thinking. So this is that brand new being slowed down that Aries really needs. So in the fourth house, you could even write a letter to your younger self, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, or to mom. Let me just say 10th house <clears throat> could be a change in the career or the plans for the new career, Ev, as you're getting ready to retire, right? What's the new thing that you're going to be brave and courageous with that independent spirit, spirit, can barely talk, I'm tired, and, and take charge, right? So I think, you know, whatever house within, and the chart, just so you know, we're going to get to it in a little bit, it's a Leo ascendant. Muy interesante that this is happening in the ninth house, you know. But that's, you know, we'll get to that. But, you know, it, it's really a fascinating energy. And um, to April 25th, well, what happens April 21st? start a tourist season although this year because it's a leap year it may start on uh, midday on the 20th i didn't double check that but that's okay so when the aries birth chart still ends and taurus begins on the 21st my mommy's birthday r.i.p mom dukes but jupiter conjunct uranus and taurus it's happening during this retrograde april's a mm, big month uh, yeah so jupiter right now is at 17 degrees hopefully you watched my astro weather okay and it's only three degrees apart Three more weeks, a degree a week to the conjunction. So Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus is really asking us to, um, I'm looking for my, uh -huh, to tap into these, to ground in nature, to activate your chakras, to increase your values and your self-worth to ask your spirit team and spirit guides and ancestors to help you. Jupiter conjunct Uranus is downloads from the gods. Yeshua. Okay, let's go to the chart. <laughs> well, Jacqueline said thank you. It was really great working with you today with the kids. Yes. And then um, Dr. Jedi Vampire God King, I accept and receive your blessing. He says, you are now infected with great health and vitality times 1 million. Thank we you, Dr. That. Jedi. He accept that, he accepts that, I accept that. Hello, Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. Kimberly. What's up, my and friend? Jamie Tingy. Hi, Jamie, how are She's you? Here. She said, this is her <coughs> season, and I said it right around the time when you started talking about Taurus season, so I'm not sure if she's saying Taurus is her season. No, I think Aries is her Aries season. Aries is her season. Right, Jamie? You're an and Aries? Evelyn was in agreement, and I'm not yeah. sure when her agreement came in. When I was talking about but, her career. Oh, okay. And independent and being a brave, courageous leader in public and having a new reputation. I'm going to play off the song, new sensation. You got this, Ev. Okay. <laughs> She can't keep, she can't I, keep I up with me. I don't know what he's talking about. He's, yeah, Jamie is. Yeah. You know the song in that NXS? <laughs> New sensation. No, 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 no. So Aries 10th house is your public reputation. I need you tonight. So wait, wait, wait. We don't sing too much lyrics. But I went from reputation of the 10th house to sensation. Because I'm here to elevate the nation. Oh, okay. I saw them in concert years ago in San Francisco. I would never pay to see NXS. I didn't pay. My friend was the head. Oh, God. I the, forgot this the story. President. My friend was the president <laughs> of the NXS <coughs> fan club, uh, and I helped her put she, together all She's the just mailers. trying to make me cough and be sicker in front of you guys. <laughs> no, no, That's no, absurd. no, no. I'm not trying okay. to do that. Don't, why, okay. why am I making you laugh? Because if I'm laughing, I'm coughing. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Sorry, guys. But anyway, it, you know what? Let me tell you something. It's been a rough two weeks for your boy, y'all. was their fan club president, <laughs> and I helped stuff all the envelopes. And I went to that concert, and I wasn't even excited to go. And can I tell you, I was up and dancing the entire concert. You know all those in excess songs. Yes, you do. You know them. And they are so freaking good. <laughs> 
I know like two in excess songs. Oh no, 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 <coughs> you know more. You know more. They, they they were the soundtrack of us Gen Xers life, okay? I'm sorry, they were so good. Okay. And he died a few years later. Oh uh, yeah. When did he die? In the nineties or late eighties? It was in the nineties. Okay. And so let me ask 90s. you guys this. Have you been feeling some of these karmic wounds coming up. Now, your Chiron in your natal chart could be anywhere, any sign, any house. But when it's in transit in Aries, number one, a lot of assassination attempts occurred and assassinations happened while Chiron was in Aries, right? In that sort of late 60s to early 70s. But there's that the wounding is emotional, physical, and spiritual. And and peep this, there's this energy where you may not initiate, assert yourself, be brave and courageous, but there's also where you can be overly aggressive, overly initiate and assert, not being able to read the room, playing like Thanksgiving family football and you're at your fiance or girlfriend's house and then all of a sudden you like, tackle her dad or uncle or her brother too hard and they like fracture their collarbone and everybody's looking at you like what is up with this maniac do you know what i mean so <laughs> just to give you an example that's pretty extreme but very visual and you can see that happening but um do you know what i mean so <coughs> <coughs> this mercury retrograde in aries with aries in mercury and then Venus coming in and they have a conjunction. I think it's April uh, 18th. It, it's, um, you know, Mercury and Aries and, you know, Mercury is the messenger. And the message in Aries is too impulsive. It's too quick. Right. And right now it's um, going to be headed back to starting, I think, in a day or two in this, the, the lunar mansion of Venus, okay, right? The sun is in the second deacon, Aries, Leo deacon. So these people are more in their heart chakra. And the lunar mansion is still till tomorrow early um, in the south node. So that's the energy behind it. When you're doing the interpretation, and I'll be teaching this in my level two class, which I'm designing now. And as soon as I get rid of all the sickness, I'm going to get back to finally finishing my astrology workbook and book. It, it's going to be done. Hopefully try to print it, but have, uh, you know, ebook digital downloads for you guys to get. And hopefully you guys support. I think you're going to like it because it's, it's not just giving you the basic foundations of astrology. I had to put a little flavor i won't tell you what it is but a little twist on it to to just make you think about certain things that you know tie into astrology and just culture and different things as well so it's kind of cool right but that's the thing aries being the pioneer independent spirit energy maverick it doesn't also like to hear the word no so when it's retrograde remember i told you guys air and fire action oriented mm -hmm. and masculine energy. They're not naturally introspective. So Mercury retrograde is saying, whoa, Aries, stop being so aggressive, impulsive, and oh, you're the boss, and no, 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 and go, 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 right? Pause and be introspective. I think we could all do that at this time. It could be helpful. So Shelly's here. Hey, Shelly, where you been? And she says her Chiron is in Aries, and she's feeling it. Yeah, me too. And then, and it's in my sixth house as a Scorpio rising, so I'm dealing and revisiting this sickness, uh -huh. right? And and dealing with that. And I don't have fears, but I got to tell you, when I never felt wheezing before in my life and my lungs, so that was a little disconcerting. So I called my doctor friend. I was like, "Yo, homie." my Aries doctor friend, right? And he's, <laughs> he's my brother from New York. And so, you know, he was like, yeah, that's not normal. That doesn't sound good. There's a lot of movement in mucus in your lungs. Let's get the z pack, right? Not really a big fan of Western medicine, but sometimes you got to call in the help and the troops. Who are you going to call? 
Ghostbusters. Because I was on the verge where, honestly, yeah. the way I felt, I felt like I needed to go to the ER almost. And for him to say that after our ex his yeah, experience. Yeah, and I don't want to go back to nobody. We don't, you know? yeah. Kelly's been sick too. Yeah, Shelly, so, so. Um, yeah, it was really great. And our buddy, his buddy, our friend, he showed up on his bike. <laughs> I mean, come on now. That that's a beautiful thing. That's very that's yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> this is but I'm at the point now, maybe oil of oregano, or do I need another Z pack? On my way to sprouts. Is no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, I don't I don't get it because I, I'm doing this five days. Mm-hmm. And I feel like now I gotta wait because I just took the medicine a little Aww, bit ago. But I feel I, I feel I should feel better. Like I oughta, mm. you know. I've been meditating. I've been toning, doing sound frequency, and positive. You know, speaking positive. I am healed. All of it. But and I'll tell <laughs> but you, but I'm struggling. Had you not gotten <laughs> sick because you know I'm working with him to create the ebook and. You guys it, it are going to love of, it. It kind of cycled through one kid, the next kid, the next kid, then me. Oh, the kids brought then, it in then the house. Me, yeah. Then him. Yeah. So we have just been over the last, it's been probably. Yeah, I've been sick two weeks, weeks, but it's been three it's weeks. Been, no, I think but weeks. with the kids. Oh, I think four we're weeks, up five more, weeks. Yeah. We're more in that six week range. Okay. okay. Because it happened two weeks. It before started spring two break? weeks before spring break. Okay. Spring break. We've been back for a week. Yeah. Well, I've you been know. sick for two weeks. So, anyways, sick, yeah. Right? Anyways, long sick. story short, it's been a long time. It's and okay, so wait, Lucy. Wait, wait, wait. Before we lose <coughs> it, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? I always Shelly have to read. No, no, well, no. I always have to read your name, Doctor Jedi Vampire God just, King. Just say Doctor Jedi. Doctor yeah. Jedi. Well, I, mean, I just it's, it's so powerful. It's like a lot of stuff going on there. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> he he said. And I just want to throw this out there because it ain't happening. But he said, have you ever contemplated shaving your head bald Buddhist monk style and becoming aerodynamic? No, because the hair is messages and antennas and it pulls in information to give you more than the sixth sense, more like a seventh sense. So now I'm going to cut my crown star. You understand? Um. Yeah, and, and I like it. Yeah, you don't and, and know she, how many years I she, had to like she, beg him. I used to grow it grow like each a, winter. He would tease and little every twist, winter, and, and, then, like, and then I and then he, well, he cut, cut it because it, it gets so hot out here. So then she finally told me, "Can you not cut it? I want you to keep it." No, I, I didn't finally tell him. Oh. I told you every single year. It took no, you, about you never four or five years just wait, to do wait. what I asked. You guys, you know me. She did not say, I want you to keep it because you know, I would have kept if it. If I had wanted those because I was like, excuse me. I would have kept it for so her. I, I was trying to get her to keep it. He's like, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. hot. <laughs> it's here now. Yes, it is. And he doesn't, he looks so cute. It's long. It I needs like to be re-twisted. Re, re, re so we're going on yes, Friday. We do. Yeah. And yeah, I know. I keep, every elevation. time I look down, try to keep my head up because every time I look down, I see this gray and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Nobody looks. That's all right. We're distinguished <laughs> in our uh, exactly. in our uh, years of yes, living. Yes, we are. You know. So we're gonna get to the chart in a second. And Jacqueline. Uh -huh. Jacqueline. It looks like Jacqueline purchased a book. She did a super chat with us. I think she needs to get a book for free. Okay. She okay. did a super chat. That's yes, so sweet. Yes. Thank okay. you, Jacqueline. I appreciate thank you. Jacqueline. you. I appreciate thank you, that. Thank you. Um, and uh, so wait, Z Pack keeps working in your body for a few days after you're done with it. So, oh, really? Okay. You know, you know, so we're okay. on the last day. To, was it the last day today? Yeah, just the last one mm -hmm. I took today. Okay. Well, I received try, that. You, Evelyn told us to try black seed oil. Yeah, no, I've been now, doing the black seed we oil. We got the black seed pit. pills. Wait, yeah, yeah. Pills. You can't. Oh, I guess you can't really see it. But yeah, can. no, I've been doing the black seed oil. But I tried to take a break from the black seed oil while I'm doing the Z pack. I was doing it for the first couple of days, but then I was. And we running also it. have our Chinese herbs. And I got Chinese herbs, so I just wanted to kind of let the Z pack dance for a couple of days without anything um, more Eastern. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna get back tomorrow to my regimen of the Chinese herbs, acupuncture on Wednesday, and then black seed oil. I highly believe in black seed oil, though. Yeah. It actually helped me the last time I had COVID. 
which was um, COVID number three. And I guess and this is either a new strain or whatever, but it's like, yeah, COVID number we've four. We've been taking these Chinese herbs and I want to run and get you guys. I want to, I'm, I'm going to Michael run and get the box because it's something that anybody can order. And what I really like, love about this particular brand is that they freeze dry, they mix and they freeze dry the Chinese herbs and they put it in a packet form that you dissolve in water. Okay, go and get it the, makes, it's to really, read really it, so good. Yeah. And every single time website. that I've had to use it over the years for my allergies, it knocks it out. No, really it, well. it is. And, and allergies are bad. Things. Immune. So while she's gone, I'm going to um, talk to you guys about this. So <clears throat> allergies are really bad right now. My buddy, who's the ER doctor, he told me the other day, actually, I think on Resurrect, and happy Easter, as I like to say, Resurrection Sunday, because we're not into no fertility, bunny rabbit, Ishtar God. And it's April Fool's Day. Now, listen, you know, Yeshua, Jesus Christos, was not born on December 25th. I go with the date of September 11th, but I've been seeing a lot of stuff lately online that some people believe that it was April 1st. You guys have a date that you believe or resonate with April 1st? I could see him being an Aries, but no, I think it's, I know Mary was a Virgo, so I think she was September 8th. I tend to think Capricorn rising, Pisces moon in the third house in the planetary joy, makes sense, right? And then Virgo Sun, my father's teachings in the house of the law, beliefs, wisdom, philosophy. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it should. You know, I don't know where I would put that Aries energy. And would you give him, if an Aries Sun, I'd have to play with that chart to really see. But um, Another thing I want you guys, before wifey uh, comes back, talking about that, with this Aries energy, remember towards the end of the month and everything, and this retrograde, and maybe, forgive me with the dates, my brain is on a little bit of loopy loopies, but you're going to have the Mercury conjunct Venus. And I believe, I think I said, and maybe it's April 18th. Because Venus enters Aries, um, you know, right like a day or two before the uh, eclipse. And you guys don't listen to all this um, negative energy and talk about the fear mongering of the eclipse. Now, I will admit it's kind of wild where it's going across America and rapture Indiana and all these cities called Nineveh, whatever. It's all biblical and Jonah and this and that. But it's bringing in a new beginning, a new energy because we are transitioning into the 5D. So that fear and all this 3D stuff, it's going to dissipate and we're not going to we're not going to even deal with that stuff anymore. So you know, stay focused on your spiritual man and do the spiritual work. Saturn's still in Pisces. Mars and Pisces, let me finish. Mars and Pisces, Venus for another day or two, and Neptune. It, it's spiritual discipline. Now, yes, Mars and Pisces, could that have been also some of the energy with all these boats crashing into bridges? We had another one in Oklahoma. You had the bridge in uh, Cleveland the same day as the bridge in Baltimore. That's Mars Pisces. Very literal. But you don't know, right? Are they, is it being orchestrated or whatever? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. Let's be physical, physical, but let's be spiritual, spiritual. All right. Spiritual discipline. Go ahead. Okay, so going just piggybacking off of what he was saying, our goal really needs to be the conscious observer. And so where we remove ourselves from what's happening and observe it, but try to get up and out of this chaos. Um, be aware of it, understand it, but don't feed it. So um, that's the best thing. Evelyn, yes, those were pills. And I agree with you. Black seed oil pills is what she was asking about. And I agree with you. The oil is better. I think Sometimes the oil is better too. Yeah. He, he normally drinks it. Yeah. Um, actually, when he was sick, my mom just picked those up, which I thought was really nice of her. But yeah. Um, yeah. The, I, I the, oil the oil is back, better. Yeah. And that's what he typically does do. <laughs> what I wanted to share with you, though, is this company. Oh, gosh, you can't see it. Oh. Yeah, just read it to him. It's called, oh, TCM Zone. Tom, Charlie, Michael. Yes. Zone.com. Anyways, they are a um, 
Chinese herb company. We have been using their products for probably about six, seven years at this point. They're really, well, really off great. Well, off and on, not consistent. Off, yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, you know, but um, our acupuncturist, he doesn't carry, he only carry, he doesn't do really anything. These are the only people that he has consistently <coughs> kept <coughs> his rotation all the time because he <coughs> believes in what they do. And they make a really great stuff. They do pills, dry herb pills, and they do granules. The granules are what I would highly recommend because they're actually more potent and they actually get into your system. They're um, potent player. <laughs> they get into your system and they have all sorts of stuff. So tcmzone.com, look them up if that is at all of interest to you. And we don't get anything for it. I'm just reading. Well, thank you, Alana, for that news report. Yes. So any quick oh, questions okay. before we get to the chart? What? Okay. No. I mean, I just want to. No, no, I mean, in the. Yeah, no. No. Dr. Jedi finally gave us, I think this must be his birthday. What? February 27th, 1983. Oh, you're a Pisces, Dr. Jedi? I'm okay. February 26th, 1973. Okay. All right, Dr. Jedi. Well, listen, you need to email me and get the birth chizzy. You know what I'm saying? Um, so let's go to the chart, and we're gonna kind of look at it. I'm not gonna do every ascendant. I wanna do the overall energy. And you guys look in your chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's only one uh, free astrology. Okay. Look at that beautiful thing, darling. So when we have this up, we can't see your comments. I'm gonna zoom in, but you see the Leo rising. You see the airy stuff going on in the ninth house. And, you know, Mercury retrograde, you know, happened today around 6.15, okay? So right off the bat, right, a chart ruler, <clears throat> Leo is the ascendant. So we find a chart ruler, and, you know, that's over here in the ninth house in, um, excuse me, in Aries, okay? And it's Aries season. We rhyme for a reason. No treason. Be verbally pleasing. Ignore the heathens. Some of them rhyme like babies that are teething. Nonverbal. Giving you terrible gerbils. And I give you intelligent herbals. So here's the Mercury retrograde. Um, Aries. Do you guys know that Aries will be moving in a Taurus 2044? Everybody born now has it. It's a um, spiritual awakener, dwarf planet, creating discord and chaos to get to a higher truth. That was the name of one of the COVID strains uh, last year and uh, Taylor Swift's tour. So, you know, interesting choices, but hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> Chiron, North Node. So this is where you're going to see the Mercury go back over these things. And then our friend Venus here is going to be dancing past Neptune. And just so you know right now, you guys, this Venus-Neptune conjunction be mindful and be careful. It is very self-sacrificing and you could be super idealistic and unrealistic about love and relationships. And with this chart, Mercury and Retrograde, we look at when it first comes in because it tells you the story of the cycle to the 25th and the Venus Neptune is letting you know like, hey, you know, you can be kind of delusional about love and relationships, okay? But with this being an eighth house, there can be some things about the secrets of the world, the mysteries, the government. Everybody's been talking about the boule right now. I'm um, not going to touch on it too much with the Mars and Pisces, but yes, understand everything's deeper than Diddy, right? They try to make it bigger than Dan Schneider and this and that, but there's people higher up and stuff like that. So you have to understand that people that are falling, they're being fed to the lions because there's people higher up that are trying to protect themselves. Do you understand? So always have to have spiritual discernment. And the v the Neptune with the Venus, there can be confusion, deception around relationships. And even right now with the finances, Mercury retrograde today. So that, that's kind of an interesting chart. And this will take us through April 25th, right? So this is like a snapshot of the energy that will permeate, although these planets and everything will be moving, but this was like 615 Eastern. 
when this happens. So it, it's this is the chart of that, right? And you know, the moon today, it's my moon, y'all. Um, <laughs> so the moon is over here, right? In the sixth house in Capricorn. Okay, for this for this chart and this time period. Sorry, this mouse is bugging. So the Capricorn moon. I'll give you a little secret about the Capricorn moon. A lot of them do take care of their mom. The emotions and how you process them are usually delayed and limited. You know, you it's like a Scorpio moon in a sense, right? Um, Scorpio moon's in its fall. Capricorn moon is debilitated. Um, Scorpio moon has to purge, release, and detox the emotions that can be very intense. Capricorn moon has to learn to kind of acknowledge them, right? They don't even want to like pay attention to them. They don't have time for emotions. They're like work, 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 work. It's very about discipline, hard work, but they can feel restricted in terms of how they feel. It gets better over time though. And the Capricorn moon is very creative, good with music and good with writing, especially in houses one, three, and five. Okay. So just be mindful of that uh, little astrological insights and tricks in the trays. So, um, and you see this moon at this time is quite liter literally, not exact degree, but it will be more so tonight. Um, squaring the sun. So that also lets us know for this time, there's this energy during the retrograde where we're kind of like trying to figure out internally and externally, is our discipline and hard work going to lead us to the future that we want? And if we don't do it, what is the price that we need to pay? Right. But remember, the ruler of the moon is Saturn. That's in Pisces. So it's telling you it's not just discipline and hard work. It's spiritual discipline, compassion, empathy, grace and mercy for yourself first and then others. Healthy boundaries. No energy vampires. Nobody should be talking bad about Dr. Jedi, Bella, Kimberly, Evelyn, Jacqueline. Right. Don't allow that. I don't care if it's spouse, parent, child, sibling, neighbor, coworker, boss. You know, you, you have to what? Be brave and courageous. Um, Mercury's retrograde. So think before you impulsively react, but let them know like, hey, you know what? Because remember, this is eventually going to go over that North Node Chiron moon, destiny, karma, fate push to be the brave, courageous leader. Hey, I don't like it when you treat me like this. I don't like it when you talk to me that way. We have every right to say who we are, how we feel, and what our expectations are of others to be treated, right? Mm -hmm. My beautiful wife told me early on in our marriage, right? She didn't want me to like squeeze her nose or blow in it. Now, yeah, I'm a little weird and I used to tease her and, you know, joke it around and squeeze her nose and, and blow in it. And she said, I don't like that. Don't do that again. And she we meant all, it. We almost had a real problem. Yeah, she, she, she had a real problem with me. So I said, I said, OK, a real problem. I said, OK, she's serious. I'm going to respect I'm, her. I'm actually having flashbacks right now. Yeah, yeah. She, her fist just <laughs> balled up, you guys. So but what did I do? I said, OK. I respect her and I love her. And she said, no, don't do that. Yeah, you're being silly and playful, but that's not silly and playful to me. So I said, okay, and I'll stop. Now, have I been tempted over the years? <laughs> 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 to want to squeeze her nose or blow in it? Oh, yeah. I am a character. I'm a silly one. I want to. I want to do it right now. Oh. But... I respect the boundaries, Saturn and Pisces, okay? Even before I knew about Saturn and Pisces, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's just important, okay? Um, when you're looking at this chart too, you know, you always want to look at some of these early houses because the second house, right, is our speech, our food, how we earn money. The Leo rising, we got the Virgo. And we have the Juno here. So 
Yes, you know, I joke and tell you it's about falling in love with Piggy astrology, the Virgo astrologer, and the Virgo stellium and appreciating me. But it's about also what? Virgo, second house food, analytical, critical, nursing, taking care of yourself through eating the things that grow in nature, your fruits and veggies, okay? And I don't judge or tell anybody what to eat. I just let them know what the chart supports, but always have that balance. Get some salt in your water to get to the cellular level. Get some cayenne pepper to get the blood circulating and flowing. We don't want stagnant. We want blood moving throughout the body. And we got to have our fruits and veggies. Even if you're a carnivore, even if you're a chicken turkey person, even if you're a fish person, you need your fruits and veggies. Okay. And, you know, you guys know where you should spend the money to be organic and stuff like that and how you can clean them in vinegar and or baking soda or whatever. But you know what I mean? Be intentional about that. Okay. Um, but at the same time, the Juno, I feel, is here energetically and spiritually because Virgo can what? In terms of the speech, be too critical of yourself. Juno's like, Self-love. Love yourself. Okay? That's important. So, you know, the Libra South Node is always opposing the Aries North Node. So you're going to have some of this energy and you have the, the, the Lilith here. Okay? I think that's pretty interesting in the local community because with the South Node being there, you know what? You may have to cut off some people from social media fake friends, people in the local community, siblings, cousins that are rejecting your peace, your harmony, not being fair and just towards you, not bringing peace and harmony and balance in your life. And Lilith is saying, find your tribe, find the people that relate to you and accept you for you. And the South Node is saying you want to have a spiritual connection. Okay. The South Node is really in Libra. Remember I told you Aries North Node I, Libra South Node we. We have to find a balance. I think as a collective with the North Node being in Aries, it's letting us know we've been too focused on the we. And sometimes the, excuse me, the wrong we. We've been focused on these relationships that are not bringing us harmony, peace, balance, justice, and fairness. And not for your highest and greatest good. So then you got to say, I think I got to let them go. Just another love, love, love. Okay. Kick it. Oh, right. And you have every right to do that. If people are bringing you peace in your life, how much is peace worth? Trillions? Billions? You can't put a price on peace. Peace is priceless. Peace is priceless. That sounds like a t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, like, I'm, I'm a very important one. I just was getting one of those flashbacks of that Visa commercial, like oh uh, yeah, crystal of fourteen dollars. <laughs> um, let's see, essential oils, this that piece, priceless. Yeah, and then this morning, the sex house. Well, not really opposing anything in Cancer, um, but I'll say this. The moon in the sixth house, this is about us working too much and it not being good for our health. The long hours, series, guards the harvest, nurture and care for yourself. They want you to put in overtime, but, you know, they're not guaranteeing your benefits, your health care, all this stuff, 401k. Like, sometimes I think... I don't think, I know our culture and our society, we should really work Monday through Thursday, right? You can do four days, 10 hours a day and be more productive and actually have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you're not getting the weekend of the deal. You're actually getting time of rest, time with family, time for faith, time to run your errands. You're not okay? getting the weekend of the deal. You're getting a three-day weekend. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because with two days, you're getting the weak end of the deal. OK, so the Capricorn moon being here, the moon doesn't like really being in the sixth house. So that's telling you to watch out for your skin, your eczema, your teeth, your bones, your knees, your body, 
The moon is your body, health, intuition, the family you create, your mama. Okay? Music, milk, mood. All right? Your intuition. So, you know, really interesting chart. Mars and Pisces, listen. We talked about all the boat stuff, but Mars and Pisces can be a spiritual warrior. It can also deal with, unfortunately, escapism with the drugs. So just be mindful, Mars and Pisces in the eighth house, you know, there, there can there can be, you know, like too much like, oh, I'm going to do plant medicine every weekend. OK, well, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe it's a little overkill. OK, I'm not judging, but I want you to think about how Mars and Pisces can be used for the meditation, the yoga, the Tai Chi. OK, and not the escapism, the chemicals, the pharmaceuticals or even the herb plant medicine. OK, Saturn. Hey, tax season's coming up. Pay your taxes. Mercury retrograde. Make sure. OK, you don't want any deception, confusion. Get that tax return back. Venus, Neptune. So the main thing you also want to look at is this 10th house, right? With the midheaven legacy, reputation with the government, legacy, relationship with dad, part of fortune, spiritual and or financial blessings, Uranus and Jupiter and Taurus in this tight conjunction. Remember exact April 21st. So one thing you have to understand when Uranus is in the 10th house, there can be sudden disruptions to your career, to the financial system, to work, to the internet. Uh-huh. Well, people have been talking about that. But look at this. This is saying, you know, something could pop off. Uranus in the 10th house in the midheaven, you know, Taurus. I'm just keeping it real. But Jupiter is beneficial. So this is also grounding in nature. When you're out in public, hug a tree. Yes, yeah, science has shown that we get grounded just from hugging a tree. That the frequency of the tree helps to balance, right, the energy and our chakras in our body. Grounding and earthing, feet, palms in the ground. People thought it was an insult, of, insult when you call people hippies or tree huggers. Well, no, it's actually a good thing. Um, I know it benefits me a lot. But I still believe in this tapping into getting downloads from God's source energy and increasing your values and your self-worth. It can be things with technology and finances and crypto and, and, and you know, increase potentially in wealth, but it can be sudden of sudden events, chaos, extreme weather, weird, bizarre energy to Jupiter and a woman's chart, the husband, but also Jupiter is management, wisdom, beliefs, philosophies. You don't really always want Jupiter in 10th house, right? Because nobody wants to hear you preach at work unless you're a preacher. Right. But this could be the motivational speaker preaching about the crystals and the earth and nature and gardening. This could be a great dynamic chef. Right. So this is also telling us to cook the food in nature. Right. Be innovative and futuristic. How you mix your your greens and your blueberry. Now, when you're doing smoothie you're not supposed to mix the fruits and veggies, but you definitely want to have fruits and veggies every day. Right. And listen, there's a lot of research showing we should eat with the rhythm of the sun. We should do intermittent fasting and we should really just have one big meal a day between like 12 and three, maybe. And maybe a couple of little snacks, but we don't need three meals, maybe two at the most. But we, we eat too much as a society, as a race, a culture, uh, whatever we are. Right. So understand this energy, you guys, it's and, and the part of fortune, right? This is letting you know that there's blessings when you have self-worth and love, spiritual and or financial, right? And the Capricorn moon is trining this. You see that, Lucy? Okay, so you take care of your daily routine, your hard work and your health, and it can bless you. When you're grounding in nature and things with your career here, Jupiter. So the moon is, is closer to the trine to Jupiter at this time. So, and tomorrow morning it'll be in the, you know, the real trine. Okay. As I do the astral weather tomorrow, I'm going to do uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we're going to get back to the chat, but I just want to share this chart with you guys. Um, 
not much going on. You know, Mercury is trining the galactic center. Even though I don't think I have it in this chart in the fifth house in Sag. But, um, you know, yeah, there it is. I do have it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice a thing where we can tap in to understand our cosmic lineage. Remember, we had Lisa Bredo, Brady on, right? Great galactic astrologer. And we have to understand, yeah, most of us here, we are star seeds. And we have to be able to tap in to understand that we have an experience beyond Earth. And I know it sounds weird and it's hard to fathom, but just imagine the different timelines and dimensions that your ancestors could be sitting with you right now. My mom and dad could be over my shoulder right now and you just don't see them unless you have eyes to see. Okay. So let's get back to the chart. And um, that was fun. And let's see where are we at here. My dear, be right here. My dear. Uh, yes. Is that it? Yes. So that was it. All right. The astro weather, not the astro weather, the Aries Mercury chart. Okay. So I'm going to get back to the chizzy. And you guys can comment on things. You know, we can't read them when the chart is up. The wifey can catch us up with the chat. And before we go, if you have any specific questions about the Mercury retrograde, please ask. Okay. So let's see now. Um, oh, my goodness. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I have to look back through here real quick. So thank you, Jacqueline. She said we have great hair. <laughs> Thank um, you. Let's see. That was that was even before. So, as long, uh, yeah, Evelyn was just saying that capsules aren't good because they don't digest in the body. And I guess it really has to depend on what the capsules are made of. I've seen some different things on some of the the things that are put into our supplements. It's like it makes me never want to take them. Mm. I'm a water pig. Oink oink oink. That was Doctor Jedi. I'm okay. not. Oh, Oh my goodness, Swan Dances with Breeze is with us. Hey, hey Swan. I don't know if she's still here, but it is so good to see you. Hello, hello, hello. Hola, stranger. And Shelly's. <coughs> That's cute. <coughs> and mm. let me see something. Now, Dr. Jedi said that you're born on Monday. You should be bossy. I think I was actually, was I born on a Monday? I think I was born on a Thursday, unless you're just going off of like, you know, with, I think think I was born on a Thursday. I'll double yeah. check that one. Um, God, you said not to mix fruits and veggies and drinks. I say it all the time. It's been a practice. You know, I didn't realize that, but yes. And we've actually changed that for a while now. And I've found that it's much better. Yeah. And I've had people comment on me and I feel like even Either do the fruit smoothie or do the, or do the uh, veggie mm -hmm, smoothie. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the ascent. Okay, so Jacqueline, Jacqueline said, um, with the ascendant in Leo, will that affect Leo risings more? Um, in a positive way, to be honest with you. So this is going to be more challenging for the Aries, Cancer, all the cardinal, Libra, Capricorns, and Leo and Sag, the Mercury retrograde could be quite nice because this can get you, for the Leo risings, can get you you know, really planning or thinking about your wisdom, beliefs, and philosophies, thinking about the book that you're going to write one day, Jacqueline, thinking about the trip, thinking about, you know, oh, I want to do astrological life coaching with Biggie Astrology, right? This is about you being brave and courageous, you know, speaking your truth about your wisdom beliefs. But like, you know what? I got to tell my mom, like, yeah, you know what, ma? I know you raised me to be a seven day Adventist, but I like astrology, you know, whatever it is, just give you random examples. You know, I'm more spiritual, you know, and this and that or whatever. So when the North node is in that ninth house with, with Mercury, the sun and Chiron, it's about healing our wounds from our father's teachings and even some educational wounds. Oh, I never got to go to college. My parents couldn't afford it. I couldn't get a loan. Da, da, da. It can be about never going on vacation and saying, you know what? I'm finally going to save up. I'm going on a trip to a foreign land. You know, so many different things. Or 
writing a book, being a mentor, you know? So it's a, uh, yeah, it is a really good energy, you know? And same if it was the, the Sag rising. Okay. Go ahead. Um, that's uh, nothing more. Okay. So before we bounce, um, just want to remind you guys, make sure you go to biggieastrology.com, sign up for the newsletter. Please, I invite you to the coffee talk. It's going to be fun. That COVID-19 chart, March 15, 2020, good and plenty. Yeah. And, you know, it's obviously focus with DC because America, uh, the shutdown. And then, you know, if you come to coffee talk, you can volunteer your chart and we'll read it as a group. Last month was super duper fun looking at the Twin Towers chart really deep. And then, you know, reading a Coffee Talk members chart, which is just, it's always a great time. Evelyn and Bella and Kimberly will tell you, and Danny, it's really deep. And we've had some really deep emotional ones too, but it, it's fascinating to learn the nuts and bolts of another human being and to hear their personal story live and direct. It's very powerful. You know, we get to see and hear about people's gifts. I know Evelyn, I mean, her chart and all that she does and her gifts, it was amazing. And everybody in Coffee Talk really loved it that night. And I, I never forget it that day. <laughs> Haven't done a Coffee Talk at night. Oh, I told you I'm going to be trying to, you know, I just been, things have been put on pause because I've been sick for two weeks. But I also am going to try to plan and schedule something. And I may even do it around that, um, you know, after a Coffee Talk the next week or so where I do an evening uh, mini coffee talk, like a webinar, just for like, you know, 65, 70 minutes, um, breaking down um, one little placement or energy. And it may be that Jupiter Uranus conjunction or, you know, I felt like I, did, I think I did that at coffee talk. So I may do a different twist on it. We'll see. But um, yeah, it should be fun. But uh, thank you guys. And Aries, hey, birth chart sales, sun, moon, rising, 100 or 208, down from 125, down from 206. <coughs> Email me directly. And you can, you can do a natal chart, a solar return, or a second day progression. So if you're an Aries sun, you may be rocking and rolling as a Gemini, a Taurus, a mm. Cancer, your private dancer. You know, so you just don't know, um, depending on your age and stuff. But it's interesting to see because remember, like the book of Genesis, one day is one year. That's secondary progressions. Okay. So astrology is, is, is wild, man. You can see everything. Yeah. So um, let's see. We're closing out, but I want to make sure that we hit the last people. Um, Jacqueline says that she embraces that kind of energy. Mm. And um, she's going to be a coffee talk. Thank and Dr. You. Gem, I mean, Dr. Jedi. Uh -huh. He said that my, I think he's talking to me or you, I'm not sure who he's talking to, but your driver day is a water snake. Your month is a wood tiger and your year is a water ox. Now that might be me because I think yeah, I am an ox, an ox yeah. for sure. So Dr. Jedi. What's a driver day? I don't even I don't know what know that is. I don't know all of this stuff and I would love to the learn. The Chinese astrology. So yeah, that's I know cool. you've brought this up in other, um, other things that you've gotten together. <laughs> Can you come on and can you talk about this? Because I'm very curious on it. I really don't know much. Ooh, whoops, I dropped something. Don't know very much about any of this. The and Chinese so, astrology, um, yeah. I would love to learn more. And if you're open to teaching, I would love to hear what you have to teach because it's fascinating. Yeah, email me, man. You want to, um, you know. Biggieastrology at gmail.com. <laughs> So, but yeah, enjoy feng you guys. Feng shui, he said. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I but, have green. But the water ox, that's Chinese astrology. The, I have green in the, is it the, wait, what would that be? East. It's east, west. So it would be the south east corner of my living room is that the my southeast corner what is, southeast corner well, down, where the down green, there. okay oh. northeast corner then i guess um because it's talking about feng shui and i put the the green plant in that corner of my living room because i heard that that was good for the energy and to keep things moving yeah, yeah. so i know that I, I know that much that's how much i know yeah but 
I wish you guys a happy Mercury retrograde in Aries. Take the time to be introspective. If you've already started something, then you can go forward with it, you know, doing a will, doing a trust, doing, you know, stuff with lawyer, signing contracts. If it's something brand new, hold off. Something new, completely new, hold off to the 26th. Yeah, and, yeah. and you could even wait, honestly, to May 13th. Um, I don't like this energy for uh, surgeries and, and even flying so much. But if you got to, you got to. So I'm not telling you not to. Um, always set the positive intention with anything. This total solar eclipse, you saw my video on it. I don't think it's a time to really, um, you know, shouldn't be looking at the eclipse, but it's not a time for the new beginnings with like, you know, getting moon water and stuff mm. like that. I wouldn't do that on eclipses, not the lunar or the solar, okay? Um, journaling, meditating, manifesting, it is a fire, right? So do it with candlelight, it could be helpful. But, um, be brave and courageous. Think about the new beginning, the new reality you're walking into and that you're building for your life. Okay. Listen, no fear. There's nothing. Trust me. There's nothing to fear. <laughs> I got the testimony, all the testimonies. Oh, and so I'm going to be, uh, make sure you guys go watch in my interviews and media playlist, the tales of resilient podcast that I was just on. Sabrina is amazing. And I'm gonna put up some short clips. She just sent me and edited the thing really well and it was really fun and i'm getting ready to do this month two more new podcasts very excited about that and this summer i'm gonna be on a panel about yeah, the uh, international gonna... association for near, near death, death studies yeah, yeah. they're having a three-day conference and they have asked eric to be on a panel I'm gonna be which on is a really panel, exciting yes, so, so... Um, kind of excited and got a meeting of talking about it tomorrow night. So mm -hmm. that's coming up in August. I'll keep you updated on that. And hopefully I'll be able to share a video on it with you. Um, so, yeah, you know, just doing it, doing it and doing it and doing it well, making moves. And um, I send you all love, healing energy. God thank bless you, you God all. God bless you all. And, and Jedi, I'll be waiting. I'd love <laughs> to learn Chinese metaphysics and be blown away just like you are. Okay. Yeah, Chinese. The Chinese know a lot. I'm a double metal dog. All right, guys. Thank you. Episode. Swan. Yeah, Swan is Swan still there? Is she still there? I don't know okay. if she's still here, but Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. We love you, Swan. Thank you. Episode 197, Knowledge is Love, Mercury, Retrograde, and Aries, April 1st to April 25th. You got this. Pause. Think before you move and react. Let's not be impulsive with our words, our actions, or our wallets. Mm. Okay. Discipline. It's, it's muy, muy importante, you guys. All right. So have a good one. All and right. Good night. We love you. Thank you. If so I'm much. feeling better, I'll come on the end of the week. If not, I will see you He's next feel week. Better. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm jumping in the car for that oil of oregano. Yep. And some so. soup. I'm hungry.